Have you ever wondered why everyone is talking about design control and why you should care? If you have, this video is for you. I will answer the questions why you should care about design control and what it is. Hi, I'm Peter Sibelius, the founder of MedicalDeviceHQ.com. The video comes from my online course, Introduction to Design Control for Medical Devices, that is available on MedicalDeviceHQ.com slash design control. If you don't want to miss out on more premium content from my online courses, subscribe to my channel by clicking on the subscribe button. Not only will you be kept up to date with what videos I publish, but you're also helping me reach out to more people that work with medical devices. I hope you will enjoy this video. Let's get started. So what is design control? Design control is the name for the requirements on product development that you have to meet to sell a medical device to the US market. Not only that, the same type of requirements applies to you if you're selling your medical device to countries of the European Union. Now that we have spoken briefly about what design control is, let's talk about why we should care about design control. The boring answer to why we should care is that complying with design control requirements is a regulatory requirement. Now this is of course technically correct, but if someone tells you that you should work with design control only because it is a regulatory requirement, I think that that person has overlooked something very, very important. Working according to design control requirements is an effective way of creating products that are not only safe, but that will also satisfy your customers' needs. In fact, most of the design control requirements represent best practices in developing new products. And if you look at companies from other industries where design control is not a requirement, you will find that companies are working according to these principles anyway, because they see the value in it. We can therefore conclude that Learning about design control is not only about doing things in a certain way to gain access to the US and the European markets, but it is to learn how to be successful in developing products that meet your customers' needs. And that can never be wrong, can it? Keep that in mind during this course. What you are learning are best practices and not only regulatory requirements. So before getting back to what design control is in more detail, a few words of caution. We're now going to run straight into a lot of three-letter acronyms and nerdy standard names and numbers. Don't let them scare you. At this time, you don't need to know them all by heart, but you should recognize them when you see them or hear about them. Design control is the area of requirements from the US Quality System Regulation, or QSR, that apply to the design and development of medical devices. To be even more specific, it is subpart C of the QSR and clause 82030 that is called design control. The corresponding term for design control in a European context would be design and development, and the requirements relating to that area can be found in section 73 of the ISO 13485 standard. You might have heard about the new medical device regulation that will soon be in force in Europe, but we'll be getting back to that later on during this course. As you may know, there are a lot of requirements that apply to medical device manufacturers. To be honest, they can appear as somewhat overwhelming at times. Luckily, the requirements we will be looking at during this course will take you really far. Let's break them down. In the US, there is a regulation called 21 CFR 820, or Quality System Regulation, or just short, QSR, which is maybe the easiest thing to remember. That establishes requirements for manufacturers that want to sell their products in the US market. Now, this is the regulation in which you will find the subpart on design control. In the European Union, we currently have three directives that covers regular medical devices, active implantable medical devices, and in vitro diagnostic medical devices. These directives share a lot of requirements. On this course, we will be focusing on the requirements that apply to medical devices. In addition to the directives just mentioned, most manufacturers would also comply with the requirements of the ISO 13485 standard on quality management systems. The reason for that being that the standard contains more detailed requirements on the quality management system than the medical device directive does. Even though product development should be done more or less the same way all over the world, there is one caveat. Submissions for product approvals and reviews of your technical documentation will differ a lot from one country to another, but rest assured, implementing the concept of this course 
will suffice for most medical device markets in the world when it comes to how you actually do the product development. What do you think? Is there anyone out there that checks that medical device companies are doing things the way they should? Yes, there is. In the EU, each country has a supervising government entity for medical devices. In the United Kingdom, that would be the MHRA. In Sweden, it would be the Medical Products Agency. In Denmark, it would be the Danish Medicines Agency. And in the US, it would be the FDA or the Food and Drug Administration. The generic names for these organizations are competent authorities. When you sell to the European Union, you will, in most cases, never meet or even get in contact with the competent authorities unless something has gone very wrong with your medical device. Because for manufacturers selling to the European Union, the auditing of medical device manufacturers is done by companies that have earned the status of being notified bodies your notified body will come and audit you once, twice or more times a year, depending on your product and audit scheme. You are their customer and you will pay them for auditing you. The FDA will also do audits or inspections, but they're not likely to appear on your doorstep every year, probably more rarely. And on another note, you are not FDA's customer. Now, I hope you found that really useful. If you want to learn more about design control, please register for my online course, Introduction to Design Control for Medical Devices, through medicaldevicehq.com, where I will take you through the process of how to develop new medical devices and maintain them in an organization where design control requirements apply, covering both European and the US requirements. I will also introduce you to a number of tools which will help you work successfully and efficiently with design control. Now, thanks for watching, and I'm looking forward to sharing some more valuable learnings and information and insights with you soon.